Mbom, welcome, welcome. Uh, this is IT Day, your boy. And today, again, like any other day, we are talking about property. And you do know that when we've got guests in the house, we are covering the law aspect of property. And without wasting time, good afternoon, good morning, good evening, Gareth. How's it going? Hi, TJ. I'm excellent. And you? Awesome, awesome. Right, if you've been here, there is plenty of other videos that I have done with Gareth that you can literally jump onto. And we've been covering the journey of buying a property as a professional investor, someone who is serious about their investments to make sure that obviously you don't get in trouble, but above it, you're doing it the right way that you want. And today we're going to cover the aspect of convincing. And Gareth, what, what are we the only country that talks about convincing? What, what is convincing actually? Yeah, look, we're not the only country that talks about convincing. Um, a lot of you will watch TV shows and see in America that they don't talk about convincing. They yes. have a different uh, process to to buy property, but we pretty much follow the UK system. So based on our history. Uh, we've we've uh, developed a system that's very similar to what the UK uh, had. So right. that's where it comes from. A conveyancer is basically a, an attorney who has additional qualifications to qualify as a conveyancer and is therefore an expert in property law. Right. The conveyancing process, um, I think if we can just put it into, into context, for the investor, we, we mentioned in previous videos that the start at the very beginning is to get your structure in place. Make sure that uh, you're buying in a company or a trust, whatever is most suited to your investment strategy and your personal circumstances, get that in place. Then buy and make the offer to purchase and again have a bespoke uh, offer to purchase that suits your own requirements and looks after your interests and ensures that your chosen entity can acquire the property in the, in the best manner possible. Both parties have now signed the OTP. How does the conveyancing process unfold? The a transfer attorney receives the, the, the offer to purchase and immediately starts the process. Um, the most, most offers to purchase are dependent on finance. So in that case, there would be an attorney appointed by the bond. They are called the bond attorneys, obviously. <laughs> um, and uh, and they, will, they actually act on behalf of the bank and ensure that all the bank's interests are protected and anyone who's bought a property with a bond will know that there is a thick pack of documents that the bond attorneys will give you that you need to sign when you get there. There's also potentially another attorney called the bond cancellation attorney because the seller might have a bond still registered over the property and that bank has to ensure that, that their bond is cancelled and all three occur at the same time. The, the transfer from the old owner to the new owner the cancellation of the old owner's um, bond and the registration of the new owner's bond. Sometimes those are handled by the same firm. Uh, we're privileged to be in a position where we are on the A panel of a lot of uh, the banks, which entitles us to do both the transfer and the bond. But in a lot of cases, there are different law firms dealing with each of the, the three components. And that requires some liaison between the different law firms to ensure that everyone moves forward at the same pace because ultimately all three have to hand in their documents at the same time at the deeds office so that that batch of documents being the, the bond, the transfer and the bond cancellation go through the process together. Um, you right. cannot have a situation where the existing bond is still registered even though that person is no longer the owner because the transfer is registered and that's basically the reason why it goes through together. If we look okay. at the if we look at the transfer attorneys They've got the. They've got, in my opinion, the most work, right? Um, because they have to deal with so many different um, interests in the property, and these range from having to uh, get uh, clearances like the uh, electrical compliance, the electric fence compliance, the gas compliance. If you're dealing with properties at the coast, you need a, a so-called beetle certificate to ensure that insects haven't invaded the the, the property. So you collect those things. And then you also have to collect or, or, or organize that you obtain a, a rates clearance certificate from the municipality. I don't know who's been following the news uh, for the last few months or, or, or especially since the initial outbreak of COVID, 
but a lot of municipalities have significant backlogs. And even prior to that, the biggest delay in any, any property transfer was waiting for the municipality who firstly provide you with clearance figures. The clearance figures um, basically relate to arrears for the past two years, the so-called 1181 figures, um, and, and as well as a couple of months in advance, uh, payments for rates a couple of months in advance. And once the seller pays that, you can get a clearance certificate from the, the municipality that, that authorizes the conveyancer to proceed with the transfer. Um, I feel, they I feel are, I feel the pain on that one, Gareth. I've got a few properties that are stuck at that position for the last couple of months. And uh, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's horrendous at the moment. And unfortunately, I know at our office, uh, the ladies here at our office are phoning the, the municipality on a daily basis. Our agents are physically going to the municipality on a daily basis. I'm in contact with some senior um, people at the uh, municipality. And despite all of those efforts, and despite that some firms have litigated against the municipalities, really? uh, the situation is not really improving at the moment. And um, there are still significant backlogs. I, I'm sure there are exceptions to the rule. But if you speak about the city of Chwani, city of Joburg, city of Cape Town, um, those major metros are, are, are not uh, delivering the, the clearance certificates in, in, in anywhere near reasonable uh, time periods. Yeah. Gareth, I want to ask of you a question, right? And this question goes back to when you are actually signing an offer to purchase. And now that we are talking about the conveyancer and conveyancing, um, I, when I started off my property investing, when I bought my first house, I didn't worry about that. But now that I'm doing uh, property on a serious note, um, I realized something. I pay for the services, right, for the conveyancer but yet I don't choose them. Or should I say in many cases, the offer to pages dictates that the buyer chooses them. And that doesn't sit well with me. I'm paying for the service. Why am I not choosing the service provider? Yeah, that tradition has arisen over a long time, uh, many decades, that the seller appoints the conveyancer, but the purchaser pays the, the, the costs of the right. transfer. That's not the same in all provinces. In KZN, uh, it's, it's not always the case. But that's not a law. That's just a convention that has arisen over time. There okay. is nothing anywhere to say that the purchaser cannot appoint their own conveyancer. And I'm of the opinion that if you are a serious property investor and not someone who's just buying a one-source property to dabble or, or, or something like that, you yeah. need to appoint your own conveyancer. Not only uh, for the transfer, but hopefully for the bond as well. Because what you want to ensure is that the transaction moves at your pace. Yes. If you need extra time to um, arrange finance and whatever, you need to move the, 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 the transfer at your pace. So you need to take care of that in the OTP, but you also need to have your own team in place. If you want the transaction to go very fast and you're looking to get um, – and, and you, you're selling the property and you want the, the – uh, buyer to qualify for finance as quickly as possible, try and get your own bond originator in there. Try and build your own team. And, and that applies to both um, finance side and to the conveyancing side. And if you've got your own conveyancing team in place, they basically report to you. Although they've got a, a duty to look after the interests of all parties to the transaction, they, they're obviously going to look to their, the person who instructed them as their primary um, person of, of who they owe a a duty of, of, of good faith to. So yeah. it's extremely important that you that, that as a serious property investor, you appoint your own uh, conveyancer. However, what I will say is that if the deal is that good, that um, the only reason to walk away from it is because the seller is insisting on their own conveyancer, don't just summarily walk away from the deal, please, in order to send me some extra business, as much as I would appreciate it, look after the deal but in that case make sure that the the conveyancer is a reputable conveyancer do your due diligence on that conveyancer and and, and be satisfied that they are going to do the job uh, adequately if not superbly um, to make sure that, that that you are not prejudiced by by the fact that the seller points their own conveyancer 100 percent and the other other thing is the other aspect that I didn't mention earlier with the, with the various clearances and the 
so on that you need, is that the transferring attorney then also submits to uh, SARS, to the South African Revenue Service. Yeah. In order for a transaction will either be subject to transfer duty or to um, uh, VAT. It might be that the transfer duty is zero because it falls below the threshold, um, but even so, the, it is still subject to transfer duty at zero, and therefore the, 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 the transaction has to be submitted to, to SARS, and you need to get either a transfer duty receipt or a transfer duty exemption from SARS that must be lodged at the deeds office with all your transfer documents. And you must remember that SARS will background check both parties so that if there are um, tax issues in the background, even though it has nothing to do with the deal that is going on at the moment, SARS might throw a spanner in the works there. So uh, it's important that people keep their, their, their tax affairs in order if they are serious property investors. 100%. Gareth, now the, the paperwork has moved in with the conveyancer now, and uh, we, are, we are ready to, to, to lodge, to exchange the transfer. I think that's the easiest term from seller to, to, to buyer. And uh, we always hear of it is lodged at the deeds office. I, I, don't, I don't know where's the deeds office. Uh, have you been to the, to the deeds office? Is it a physical okay. place? What happens? Yes, it is a physical place. There are, are several deeds office in South Africa. I think they are nine. Okay. Um, there are two in Gauteng where, where, where we are being the, the Pretoria deeds office and the Joburg deeds office. The Pretoria Deeds Office is the biggest deeds office in South Africa in terms of the volume that they do. And people will be astonished to hear that in some days they're doing three and 4,000 deeds in a day that are, are wow. handed in at the, at the Pretoria Deeds Office. So it is a massive undertaking. And for the benefit of your viewers, I will take you on a walkthrough throughout the, the Pretoria Deeds Office to see how the, how the transaction unfolds from the moment that the, the three documents that I mentioned earlier, the transfer, the bond, and the bond cancellation, are gathered together, lodged at the deeds office, proceed through all the way to uh, uh, what is called prep and then execution. Execution is not meaning anyone is being executed. It just means that the, the documents are executed. In other words, the transfer and the bond are registered. And then uh, a week, two weeks, three weeks later, um, the title deed becomes available from the deeds office. The registration, the, the, the new owner is the owner from the date of registration even though they, they won't receive the, the title deed for, for a couple of weeks. But I'll take you on a walk through, through the deeds office. Compliments of Gareth. Let's check out what the deeds office looks like. Hi, everyone. Okay, so due to the miracle of video editing, I've jumped from my boardroom into the very noisy Pretoria CBD. Uh, we are right in the middle of town. Behind this building here is Church Square. And if I turn around here, uh, you will see that uh, we are right next to the deeds office. This is the uh, Rural Development and Land Reform Building. Most of it is the deeds office, but there's also other uh, floors that are occupied by things like the Surveyor General. You can see it's 17 stories high. And you will see also that due to the miracle of video editing, um, I've jumped straight into the city centre. Uh, um, but not only that, I have stopped on the way for a haircut. Okay, we're going to go around the corner over there uh, into the city centre, uh, into the deeds office and uh, take a look at what happens inside. Okay, so normally the deeds office would be a hive of activity, but uh, obviously since COVID's hit, there have been very strict lockdowns, uh, lockdown, and that has resulted in the Pretoria deeds office only shutting down twice for decontamination, which is decontamination, which is quite good um, for a government uh, body and. Um, at the moment, only conveyances are allowed in the deeds office, not the public, and eight to 10 um, prep clocks are allowed in. That's a total amount of people other than staff that are allowed here. In fact, you have to present your admission as a conveyancer, your certificate, uh, in order to gain access to the building. And then if we look, here is the first step of the proceedings. Um, the um, bond attorneys, the transfer attorneys, and the BC attorneys uh, put their batch together um, people leave their, their deeds in here so that the other attorneys can collect the batch and put it together and then they uh, would hand it in here at the large market excuse me if I'm a bit out of breath I've just got walked up the stairs from 
the lodgement on the first floor. The next step is on the fifth floor, which is distribution, which is where the um, batches are distributed to the various examiners on level one. Firstly, they come back from level one, they then go to level two, and then uh, to level three or monitor before going to prep. We'll discuss prep just now, but basically they're different seniority, um, the different levels of examination to ensure that all deeds are compliant with everything that they need to be uh, prior to registration. So uh, in the other floors above, remember I said the building is uh, 17 stories high. We find various uh, examiners on each of those floors. Uh, well, not all of them, but on lots of them. And uh, they conduct the examination process and the deeds are then distributed further down the line. Yeah, you can see some of the deeds that are for distribution today. Uh, typically, there's about 2,000 to sometimes even 4,000 deeds lodged per day in the Pretoria Deeds Office. It is the busiest deeds office in the country. Um, I think for further uh, 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 failure to, well, ability to not uh, lose my breath, I will now take the, the lifts here and not the stairs again. Okay, so after examination, uh, one of two things can occur, either that uh, deeds will be rejected uh, due to uh, whatever reasons which make them non-compliant, or otherwise they will come to prep. If they are coming, uh, coming to prep, they are thrown out here. Uh, either there's very small notes that the conveyancer needs to attend to, or there's nothing. Either which way the conveyancers will check the finances on any given transaction, and then they have uh, a couple of days, uh, five days in fact, to uh, get the, the batch from here to execution. Prep actually just means preparation, in other words preparation to register. It's not like it's a prep school or doomsday preppers or anything, it's merely preparation to go to execution. Execution also doesn't mean that anyone is being um, executed, it means that the deeds will be executed, in other words, signed and registered by the uh, Registrar of Deeds. The preparation room is normally a hive of activity, but again, in these COVID times, uh, it is pretty, pretty uh, sparsely populated. If the conveyances are ready to proceed to registration, the documents are handed in here at prep and they will then go through to registration the following day. It's now 9.30 in the morning and normally there would be an absolute hive of activity here, but again COVID has restricted what people can do. The registration times have been extended in order to try and ensure that there are fewer people in, in the execution hall at any given time, that's being the execution hall. Uh, you can see there are a few conveyances sitting here already, but if we look down the side here, we will see that there are many, 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 many chairs that have been uh, taken out from the deeds office, uh, the execution hall, so that the space is more restricted. Once the deed is uh, signed by the conveyancer in the execution hall, it will go to the deputy registrars of deeds who sit on these uh, these desks down the side here and sign that the, that, the, that the deed has been executed. It then goes to be numbered, uh, stamped and scanned um, so that the deeds office has an updated record of all the deeds. And a week or two later, the uh, title deeds and the bonds and so on will come out in delivery which is over here once it's collected from delivery the title deed will either go to the owner or if there is a bond registered over the property it will go to the bank as their security and that basically concludes the process from the deeds office 
Uh, I hope that that was informative and that uh, you could see exactly how the Pretoria Deeds Office works. Um, the other Deeds Offices in South Africa work on a similar basis, although maybe not exactly the same. Cheers for now. Bye. Thank you.